He was an art student in New York City, and at the age of 23, he came up here to rent a room to Bolton Landing, and he fell in love with it and bought the farm on, on the spur of the moment so he could live apart. In New York City, there was always talk, and he felt that an artist wasted his, his energy in the talk of art instead of in the making of the art. Here, he was isolated and could focus on making the art. He built everything. He could fix anything, and in fact, people from town would come up with something they needed welded, and he would weld it for them in return for eggs or some barter system. Somebody came by and had a piece of bear to share, so he roasted the bear. He would make woodsman stew, that's with beaver or chipmunk, anything furry that got too close to the house would wind up in woodsman stew. He loved to cook for his friends and family. And I was thinking about the stir fries. Each vegetable had to be a different color and a different shape and enter the pan at a different time. And then it would all be done at the same time. But those were the rules of stir fry. My father didn't like getting up early. I would be up first. And then he would get up and make breakfast and we'd often have breakfast out on the terrace in our pajamas. But he took time off to play with us. At night we would dance or stand on his feet and dance. And I loved that. Or he'd paint with us, and he'd listen to our ideas seriously. He was very good with his hands. He could make anything. He made our toys. He made us an apartment building, dollhouse, complete with a water tower on top, made from a coffee can. So he made everything. He didn't believe in buying toys. That froze the imagination but we painted with him and made sculpture with him. It had to be abstract what we did. We understood the rules. And he'd share his art supplies. He didn't believe in wax crayons or anything for children. They were real art supplies. My sister and I were horse crazy, as most kids in the country were, especially girls, and we wanted a horse. And my father said, fine, if you can make a life-size horse, then you can have a horse. So he welded the armature, and we did drawings of the musculature of the horse to analyze the muscle groups and how the horse worked. That was the whole point of drawing a horse if you were going to draw something realistic to find out where its power lie. So we made the horse out of sheeting in plaster of Paris. We still have it. And after we finished the horse, then he got us a horse. Out of high school, he worked in a Studebaker factory and learned some of the tools of the Industrial Revolution. And so he made sculpture with the same skills. And my father took different approaches to abstraction. There was the linguistic approach via James Joyce. A friend of his told me that he used to say he didn't need Picasso because he had James Joyce. In other words, the door to abstraction was through Picasso or it was through James Joyce. And that abstraction of the language in the letter is very Joycean in its way. And then there was found objects. You can see that in the sculptures. He would say he would recognize parts of his identity in farm implements that were found buried around here. And he had a junk pile where he could select pieces that he needed to make a sculpture with just what he needed at a certain time. And he would leave it in the pile. He called it to cure to get rusted to a certain level that he wanted. Or he would make art out of cut pieces, geometric style. So it was his 
idea to work from his identity, and identity doesn't have images. He wanted to measure his nature against nature. And that was through the language of abstraction. They could make reference to landscape or to the figure, but why repeat what nature makes? What humans make is something different, something more pure, more abstract. He was a teacher at Sarah Lawrence College down in Bronxville near New York City, and he rode the train back and forth and watched the train tracks run right along the Hudson River. So he would watch the train lines and the river and the boats and the angles of the river and the mountains and the horizon line of the river. So you can see the lines of the train tracks in that piece spinning through the air. It is an amalgamation of all those trips he took. He had so many ideas. He never knew what an art block was, a work block was. He had no idea what that meant. He had so many ideas that he worked on many different kinds of work at the same time. He would work on the cubis and found objects. He died too soon. He was making art and full of ideas. He hadn't gotten beyond, he said, the ideas he had in the 30s. He had so many more ideas and so many more dreams. It was very sad that he died so young. <laughs>